I want to thank you, Mr. President. Before I get in my prepared remarks, I just want to say that we've been at war for 16 years. And uh, the Senator of Alaska is correct. We do need to rebuild our military. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's not something that just came about last night. It's something we should have been doing with this budget that should have been passed to go into effect the end of September. And if you really want to talk about the hypocrisy of this body, and there's plenty of it, the fact that we've got folks coming to the floor who haven't said a peep about CHIP, and it also, by the way, ran out of money the end of September, and talk about how important it is for those kids, and by the way, it is very important for those kids, when it's the first time we've heard a peep out of them, is interesting. But the fact is, is that we do need to come together. And we do need a long-term budget deal. And by the way, when I'm talking about long-term, I'm not talking about years and years. I'm talking about to the end of September of this year. That's all we got to have, budget deal to the end of September of this year. That addresses more than just CHIP. And CHIP is important. It needs to address our military. It needs to address our southern border security. The chairman knows this. We work together on the Appropriations Subcommittee on Homeland Security. He understands how important this is. We've got to make sure our borders are secure. And we've got to make sure we have domestic programs that working families and businesses depend upon for this country, like CHIP, like funding community health centers like making sure there's dollars there for rural ambulance services. And the list goes on and on. But we've had an incredible failure of leadership here. I think we've had three patches to this budget. Three of them. This was supposed to be done 111 days ago. 111 days ago, we were supposed to have a budget that lasted for the fiscal year 18. We were supposed to have a bill that kept the services for the U.S. government open and operating so that Montanans and Americans could have the certainty that they elected us to create. But for 111 days, the leadership on the other side of the aisle, and I mean intentionally so, I believe, have played politics and kicked the can down the road. This is not nuclear physics, folks. This is about fun in our government. It's not that tough. But we've hit deadline after deadline after deadline. And what we've been told is, look, we'll extend it out another month or two, and we'll get an agreement. Oh, we'll send it out another month, and we'll get an agreement. Look, at Christmas time, I was ready to work here through Christmas to get this done. Because families in this country deserves the certainty of the basic job of setting up a budget. This was the basic job we're elected for in this body. But on, I believe, December 19th, once again, we kicked the can down the road and it was said, you know what, we're going to have a deal by January 19th. Well, guess what? It's January 19th and now we're going to move the goalposts again. Each of those previous patches I voted for. Why? Because I believed them. I expected the leaders of this body to work in good faith and get the job done. I was wrong. Because for 111 days, they've re refused to provide long-term funding for community health centers. For 111 days, they have failed to pass a bill that secures our borders. For 111 days, they've neglected our children by refusing to reauthorize CHIP. For 111 days, they've failed to do the most basic and fundamental aspect of our job, and that is pass a long-term budget that works for this country and works for my home state of Montana. Now today, we're about nine hours before the government is set to run out of money. Folks on the other side of the aisle are pointing their finger over here and saying, geez, we've got to reauthorize CHIP if we don't. All these kids, guess what? That same argument could have been made six months ago and was not. We've got 24,000 kids in Montana who I'm telling you, they've been watching, and those families have been watching and say, why, why hasn't it already been done? Why are we 111 days after the budget's been passed, and we still have nothing? There's a chip bill that's been sitting on a majority leader's desk for many a month to reauthorize chip. I believe it has 24 co-sponsors on it. 
And now there are members of this body who are not even co-sponsors of that bill, who have found religion and come to the floor and are passionately talking about CHIP, and we have heard crickets from them until the last day or two. To the folks who have been down here on the floor and on cable television talking about what a great program CHIP is, and it has been a great program. It's one of the first pieces of major legislation that I voted on when I was in the Montana Senate. Where you been? Why haven't we had it on the floor and voted on it? It's important. It's pure hypocrisy. It's what the senator from Alaska talked about, only on a different issue. This dysfunction and failure here is way, way, way too deep. This bill also fails to fund community health centers. And I'm going to tell you, I've talked to the administrators of the community health centers in, in places like Riverstone and Flathead up in Kalispell and Bullock and Haver. I'm going to tell you what, these folks are sweating bullets. They're afraid they're going to have to close their facilities down. They provide primary health care to 100,000 folks. That might not sound much like many people, but in Montana, a state of just over a million folks, it's a big deal. These are essential facilities to our communities across Montana. They provide basic health and they keep families alive. The folks that run these community health centers have told me face to face, if we don't get the funding, we're gonna have to close the doors. It's been 111 days and we should have had a budget to fund the community health centers and we're still standing here today saying, guess what? We come back here in February, things are going to be just fine, just like they said in December. I got news for you, nothing's going to change between now and February. So let's get a long-term budget deal today that addresses some of these issues. This, this bill also fails to, to uh, make our borders secure. As I said earlier, the chairman of the body right now and I have worked on the Homeland Security Appropriations Committee to draft a bill that works. It invests in a wall where a wall makes sense. It hires more Border Patrol agents. That bill was never brought up to full committee, and I, I'm sorry that, that that never happened because it would have been great. And it's really, it's not included in the bill before us today. Time and time again, over the last four months, good bipartisan bills have been piled up on leadership's desk. And rather than bring these bipartisan bills to the floor, rather than pass a long-term budget, a more fiscally responsible budget. The Senate has just said, no, guess what? We'll do it next month. And we'll do it the month after that. And we'll do it the month after that. It is time to stop putting the Band-Aid on our budget. Because in four weeks, we'll be back here again if this passes. And it'll be the same problems. When in fact, we can solve them today and we need to solve them today. Enough is enough. Congress has three times passed short-term, stopgap, crisis funding bills. These bills fail my constituents and they waste taxpayer dollars. Enough is enough. Mr. President, people are tired of this. And I know they're tired of it on the other side of the aisle because they've told me it. They've told me it's time to do our job here. They're as frustrated as I am. They're as frustrated as Montanans are when I meet them face-to-face -face in town halls and coffee shops. They tell me it's time for Congress to get off their duff and do their job. Montanas don't run their businesses like this, and our government should not run like this. Especially, especially after I hear promises to drain the swamp. This is exactly the opposite. Bringing this garbage bill to the floor is a dereliction of duty. It's incompetent, and mostly it is a failure of leadership. It's a failure of vision. In any other business in this country, if managers acted like the leadership of this body, they'd lose their jobs. It's almost as if the majority have planned this all along to get us this point for political purposes. Well, guess what? We should not be here for political purposes. We should be here as Americans, doing our best to give people the certainty that they need, rather than playing with a hot potato saying, you know what? We'll do it next month. We were sent here to govern. We ought to govern. Put politics in the closet. We got nine hours to do a job. We need to do it. If the majority leadership in the White House are going to continue to sit back and twiddle their thumbs, let's bypass them. Let's get a deal. 
There's good people in this body. We need to sit down and get a deal that works for this year, for the rest of this year. That's till the end of September, not till the 19th of February. That strengthens our border, that reauthorizes CHIP, that funds our community health center, that supports rural hospitals, that fixes DACA. Now, I know that there are scores and scores of folks on the other side of the aisle that want to do this. Nobody should leave our desks in this body until this job is done. We are nearly four months into this fiscal year. At some point in time, the Appropriations Committee should be starting to work on the 19 fiscal year budget. But we're not because we can't even get through 18. We need to stop governing from crisis to crisis. Nobody wants a shutdown. And that's why we need to stay here and do our jobs.